I mean, it's an epic story, and it's just um, to recreate Olympic races is a huge challenge. Um, the scale of the story is exciting, and the most in, uh, scary thing was basically how to make it look interesting because these boats are long; it's hard to get to them. Working on water is will be challenging, would be challenging, and um, and it's a. It's, it's it's a very monochromatic sport, you know. There's no curves like in car races. There's the they go straight, they move a lot. It's very hard to see them in close-ups. That was a big uh, headache. We knew we would film on lakes and rivers, so we had to find the right um, tools. So we did a couple of weeks of testing where we put cranes on boats, jib arms, and uh, we tested with drones, we tested with underwater cameras, and uh, put together a package which we would think, which we thought would be most suitable. And, and um, uh, we tested two weeks and, and mounted cameras on boats. And, and uh, what surprised me is that these boats are Actually, they're 60 feet long, but they're also quite fragile, and then uh, so so you have to be really careful with them. And um, also, you don't want to get in the way of the actors um, uh, or the athletes, because uh, so you have to look for light cameras. You have to look for mounts which would be possible suitable um, arms, which also you know the boats we're using have also an impact of, on, on the water. So, so we couldn't create too much wake because that would sink them. Certain angles you can only film with a drone and all of that was, is a lot we tested. We know that a big part of the film would be on water. So on water and with these boats moving and with us, um, getting closer, it felt, um, net, I mean, the choice was obvious that we couldn't light it or, you know, we could have taken boats to the studio and then create a world around, but we didn't want that. We wanted it to feel real. So we started with a big naturalistic approach. So the waterwork should look as real as possible. And then coming from there, you know, the lighting I feel like should be naturalistic. We shouldn't do over stylization. So um, that led us to, um, to the way we lit it. The good thing about George having done Perfect Song is he knew that it would be a challenge and we, like yesterday, we talked about it and he said this was probably the most challenging film we've done together. Uh, and also for him as a director because working in water and working with all these elements and, you know, um, you just, all of a sudden you're very um, exposed to elements and, and, and just to get, you know, the right angle and then lock in positions is really challenging. So he was very aware and he was patient, patient with us and then with the process and uh, respected that a lot. So that made it much easier for us. For me, one of the key things of George as a director is um, a, he creates this environment on set which uh, makes it easy and everybody's at comfort. B, he's very quick in taking decisions. And he's really visual, a visual filmmaker. And, and I think maybe that's one of the things people overlook because he's, he knows what, where the camera is, what it does, and, and he's very precise in... Um, keeping to a style and then he's not like, you know, fishing around. He knows where what he wants and he's very quick in deciding. 